Hey, Foot Clan, today's episode is brought to you by Harry's Razors. Look, Harry's is so confident in their blades, they're going to send you their popular free trial set that includes a razor, five blade cartridges, and shaving gel for free. When you sign up for a shave plan, you just pay shipping. Plus, special offer for our listeners. Just enter the promo code FOOTBALLERS at checkout, and you get a post-shave balm added to your order for free. So go to harrys.com right now and enter promo code FOOTBALLERS at checkout to get your free trial set and post-shave balm. That's harrys.com, code FOOTBALLERS. To the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from the FantasyJocks.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Happy, happy, happy. We had a great waiver wire show yesterday. It was tremendous. It was the best. It was the best. Um, the fantasy footballers back again, Andy, Mike, and Jason. It is Wednesday. It is October 5th. Overcoming technical difficulties like a boss. What technical difficulties? Well, if you watched our uh, YouTube show after the show, you know what technical difficulties. Andy decided that he wanted to try out for the Olympics in the shot put <laughs> Oh, that's more of a discus. But yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It would be more of a discus. <clears throat> But he, uh, he threw his laptop across the room, which is not a good idea. Now, people will think I am an angry person when you say it like that. <laughs> I did well, not. You were mad wasn't. at your no, children I'm, and your wife, and you said, I take this laptop. Well, it makes sense like that that would have been the reaction to my hard, uh, my difficult Odell Beckham Jr. situation from yesterday, the horrible beat. Like, but they were not connected. This was just stupidity, just pure non-anger. I got up to, to like change the... Uh, temperature of the house, and I like swung the laptop around you, you in my hand. You thought you were cool, Jesse James. You're like, I'm gonna. Whole, I unholstered my laptop yeah. and I threw it across the room <laughs> onto the tile. And the screen has this giant crack in it, but it was working on the show yesterday. Uh, not so much today. Uh, yes, and so Andy's currently working on Jason's laptop. Uh, Jason has made the sacrifice. Usually when you don't see him with a laptop, it's because he forgot. Right. <laughs> but right, right now he is uh, he's taking one for the team. And before we jump into the today's show, just real quick, we gotta get this we gotta get this settled by the foot clan. So Brooks, make this a poll. When you scroll on a laptop, oh do you, you're like let's say you're on a Mac and you, you want to scroll down, do you swipe down or do you swipe up? Basically, do you use the new way that Max have been doing it where you scroll content or do you do the old way where you scroll the, the page? Because Andy like and a I, dummy, Andy like a Windows and I user. think the window goes down, so I pull down on the mouse. Jason, it, reverse I brain. scroll the content like it's an iPad. Okay. So I, just, I want that settled by the foot clamp. Yes. Yes. I am firmly in Mike's corner and uh, Jason's been so kind to let me use the laptop today. So I'm not changing the settings on him, but I, I thought about it. On to football. All right, quick question of the day. These two wide receivers are the only two that have had at least 10 targets in every game Ooh. this season. Uh, I'm, I'm very it's confident. Not, you got two options. so I'm very confident that Antonio Brown is one of these guys. Very confident. The second one, uh, I'm less confident. Uh, you feel, can take a guess. I feel like it's Brandon Marshall. Okay. Those are your guesses? Yeah. I think Brandon Marshall went uh, like seven targets, eight targets, Did ten he? targets, 12 ah, targets. Uh, so he is not it, I'm pretty confident. But I'm not sure, man. I, I'm thinking, okay, so who's usually the best? Julio. I'm gonna, I guess I'm going to go A.J. Green and uh, hope he's, the, he's that man. Well, you're very wrong about a, uh, on, uh, Antonio Brown. Oh, I just skipped that. Antonio Brown only had five targets in the game against the Chiefs. Five, oh, is five that, targets. Thanks, That's, Mike. Okay, no, here's what I was remembering. That broke the streak. Like he, he was on this monstrous streak. Okay, so, so you're all was, wrong. Yeah. No, none of you have named anybody I'm, correct. I'm very wrong. One, any more shots in the dark here? Only two wide receivers with at least ten targets in every single game. Allen Robinson. Uh, you're wrong again. Sweet. Uh, let's let's keep. I'm uh, tired of looking like a dummy. So all right, Jarvis Landry. Uh, of uh, course, of course. T. Y. Hilton. Really? Those are the only two. With at least 10 targets in every single game. I am a little surprised by the Hilton. Kind of surprising, huh? Yeah. I, I'm a big Hilton fan ever since the Moncrief injury. And I, he, Moncrief. Will be, he will be back, though, right? I need you. Yes, he'll be back. We don't know when. It'll be a couple weeks still, though. 
All right, today's show, we have Keep Trade Cut on the show today. We have our Foot Clan mailbag episode as well. All the news and notes you need to know. All the things that have broke this morning. A lot of players had not been discussed previously. Now you're starting to see some news about guys like Kevin White, so we're going to get into that. Make sure you follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Follow Jason at Jason FFL. Follow me at Andy Holloway. Follow Mike at FF Hitman. Yeah. You can check out the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. We have snap count articles. No snack count articles, Jason. Oh, man. I'll, I'll get on that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but we have a, a ton of new articles breaking on there all the time. And uh, check out our fantasy football community at jointhefoot.com. We're over 2,500 of you are exchanging fantasy football questions and trades and all those type of things every single day. So let's go ahead and jump into the news. News and notes from around the league. All right, Chris Johnson, IR, sports hernia surgery. Yep. I had uh, some people tweet me and say, okay, so who is – Who's the handcuff now? And Andre the answer Ellington. is no one. Well, it, it's if, Andre Ellington. If anybody, it's Andre Ellington. So, oh, you're saying I'm the saying handcuff, that if, not the handcuff. Well, sure. So I, I, what I'm saying is that if David Johnson goes down, I don't think Andre Ellington will do very much. That's my. Oh, opinion. I think he'll be. Uh, I, I think I, I think be, he'll be very. Involved. I think he would become usable. They He's would, a pass catching back, so I mean they'd use him a lot. They would bring in other guys though. You are right. They would. Um, Rob Gronkowski. Differing non-team reports yesterday about his hamstring not being right. Saw some tweets this morning. I mean, they said, the tweets basically said, the Patriots know it's not right. That's why you see him going out on very few routes in the past couple of weeks. There's a whole, nother, a whole other narrative that says, hey, Brady's back. It's time to unleash the beast. Do you buy into the fact that it's not right? And if so, what are the implications for a guy like Martellus Bennett, who wasn't mentioned, I think, in our tight end waiver wire show yesterday, but... You know, if if Gronkowski's hurt, Bennett is not just good. He might be great. Completely agree. If, and the the reality is this. Look, if, if Gronk was really healthy, if he was at 100%, there's no way that they would not have utilized him as a major part of the game plan with Jacoby Brissett in those games. Like, that, that's a weapon. That's a tool. But they were actually worried about his health, so they, they kept him out. Clearly, with this report coming out, I'm buying into it a little bit. Now, that doesn't mean I'm trading Gronk away. Heck, I'll go trade for him still. He's going to be a beast when he's out there. But I agree with you that Martellus Bennett should be owned right now. Uh, and, and when Tom Brady comes back, he's going to be great until Gronk takes over. You guys want to hear a crazy stat about Martellus Bennett? I, you know I do. So, uh, so since 2008, that's when he, he broke into the league. Martellus Bennett has four games over 100 yards. Four, just four games. That's really surprising considering his total yardage. And one was this past week. Two of them are this year. Wow. So just just something to uh, to remember. Yeah, I mean, if you – Edelman had nothing. Well, yes, that's very true. Edelman is about to feast like a Golden Corral buffet, in my opinion. Yes. All right, Jordan Cameron, concussion. Um, I think he's been out for a couple years now, so <laughs> – We'll see him back into fantasy relevance here soon. Oh, come on. I, I don't think Br we will. No, oh, I was just kidding. Cameron. Des Bryant not practicing on Wednesday. They wouldn't rule out Des for the week five game. If you had to ask me, I think he'll play. Really? Yes. Hmm. But, but I also told you that Jamal Charles wouldn't play. But I was kind of right. Yeah, but I think right? he played Three about. carries or something? Yeah. Yeah, this is. It's so bizarre what is going on with Des Bryant. It was the hairline fracture. And now they're like, oh, no, it's just a. It's just a bone bruise. Like, well, what is it? Are they just pulling shenanigans here? So if, if – if, I will say this. If Des Bryant doesn't play this week, I think they're a bunch of liars and that he actually does have that hairline fracture. All right. Uh, Kenneth Dixon expected to make his NFL debut in Whee! week number five. Yesterday, Justin Forsett was released. I'm, a, I'm going to make one final comment on Justin Forsett. I know we spent some time on him yesterday. I don't have sad music to play today. I'm going to contend, and I think we were, were we talking on the air about him stinking? Yes. Okay. Do you realize the only year, the, his big year, you know who, who he has to thank for that? Who's that? Gary Kubiak. That one year with Gary Kubiak in the Gary Kubiak run-friendly system was the one year that he had that monster year. Gary Kubiak does a lot for running backs. Yes. I, I mean, thought you were going to say Ray Rice. You know, that's, that's very true. I'll, I'll just throw out that, I mean, the guy has a lifetime 
yards per carry average of 4.8. That includes the 3.2 stinkiness of this year. I do not, I do not uh, possibly try to contend with that. He has been very bad this year. But I think on, on the career, Justin Forsett has been quite good. All right, Kenneth Dixon makes his debut. How soon until he – does he ever see the lion's share here with Terrence West playing well, I guess is the question. He he very well might, but I think he's – personally, it looks like he's going to step into that number two role ahead of Buck Allen, obviously ahead of Justin Porsett, who's no longer with the team. So Good call. He's going to have he, – I think he's going to have the opportunity in a, in, a, in a quick fashion to take over that role. It's really more up to – Terrence West yes because I think if Terrence West continues to play good they're not going to just stop you know stop using a guy that's played well in training camp in preseason and now in the regular season they'll keep riding him this Sunday will be huge to see if Buck Allen goes back to inactive if he goes to inactive I mean then it's Kenneth Dixon could become just a weekly flex play and eventually he could take over but that's not a guarantee right now for those of you wondering whether fantasy football owners are indeed qualified to coach professional football teams, the answer is yes. Whoa. The answer is yes. Adam Gase came out and said a four running back committee was actually, quote, some bad coaching by me. That is very large of you, and Adam Gase. plans to scrap that. Good. Good. Because it's ridiculous. It's nonsense. It, do you re did you know that on the sideline, they were actually, it was one carry and then you get in the back of the line. Right. <laughs> and then you, the next guy runs in, and then it's back of the line. It's like grade school, you know? You take your turns. Now, it's it, very fair. Look, very it, fair it's them. going to be a Jay, It's going to be a combination of the two guys that, by the way, were leaps and bounds ahead of the other two. It's going to be Jay Ajayi and Kenyon Drake this week. And so if, if Jay Ajayi is on your waiver wire, I'd rather have Jay Ajayi this week than I would, say, Matt Asiata. So when you talk about a very low upside – play i'd rather take the guy that's younger that you know i think could break a bigger play than than the matt asiata do you agree with me i mean i'd rather have Kenyon drake than ajayi i think oh would you i'd well, rather have ajayi okay yeah i mean i i don't know i think it's close i'd have if, whoever's on waiver and it's cheaper yeah and if, if you need a weekly play and you want to be grossed out about it i think you can put <laughs> one of these two guys in. i always want those i am personally still for the most part avoiding it i'm not saying they're not worth picking up or worth having and you know in the hopes that something breaks right but this whole situation is a mess it's still a short-term situation until arian foster comes back I, I, personally i've i've chose to avoid the miami dolphins backfield all right the Bears, uh, they have an injured Kevin White on uh, the roster, and Ian Rappaport is saying the ankle injury suffered by the Bears, Kevin White, will keep him out an extended period of time. Well, how about I, – I guarantee you by the end of the day – well, okay, it's John Fox, so I don't guarantee you. I think by the end of the day we will have a declaration to the injury. And here's something to be concerned about if you are a Bears fan with Kevin White. When Jeremy Langford had an injury that was a high ankle sprain, it was revealed very quickly. With Kevin White, John Fox is held back telling anybody what's going on. Kind of like last year with Kevin White. Right, and and so it's a little gamesmanship, whatever, but it's also indicative, I think, of a more serious injury that was not quickly diagnosed without an MRI. If you had to ask me, I think you will. It's probably a severe high ankle sprain, six weeks. I mean, that would be my guess. It could be worse. We're going to find out today. And so this this affects both Alshon Jeffrey and Eddie Royal. And Zach Miller. A yes, and Zach Miller. I think Zach Miller has jo been, been solid uh, and, and would have been fine regardless. Alshon Jeffrey, it's about his health, right? If he's if he's fully healthy and he's the main guy there, we've seen Hoyer lock in You know, last year to DeAndre Hopkins. Alshon Jeffrey could be a beast, but you have to contend with his injuries. The guy that I really love right now who's still – after, you know, the major waiver day, still available in most leagues is Eddie Royal, who has been uh, – I mean, he, I think he's, he's a wide receiver great. two he's, he's on the season. He's number 20 on the season. The problem I have with Royal, and you can you can argue this, I, I definitely think he should be signed. I think he could be started. The problem is, is he's done this very, very many – I mean, he's done this a ton of times where he has three or four flash games, and then he disappears. Eddie Royal has finished the season as a wide receiver two before with Jay Cutler. That's, I know that was a while like eight ago. eight years ago. But I'm just saying he, he he's not a, a some nobody that is you know has doesn't have the talent to do it and he's looked good so far so I'm just saying with everything aligning if you need a weekly start or just a couple of weeks I like Eddie Royal right now I'm fine putting him in there I read a stat Alshon Jeffrey in all the years past has averaged 9.86 targets a game 
This year thus far, he's in the sixth range for targets per game. He's still one of the league leaders in terms of downfield yards, despite less targets than just about anybody in that category that's competing with him. Feed him. But obviously he, he had been limited. I think you're going to see a ton of Jordan Howard. I think you're going to see a ton of uh, Miller and, and Royal, and we'll see what happens. So I it kind of – I don't know what it is. I hated the Bears with Jay Cutler, but I am curious about the Bears with <laughs> Hoy, with Hoyer and Howard. And, a you know, they just won a tough game. It's just – it's interesting yeah. how these things happen, but I really, really like Zach Miller moving forward. Well, Speaking that, of healthy. Oh, wait. No, no, no. Speaking of healthy, is that what you said? Yeah. Wait, you're talking about Ryan Matthews? Darn right. All right, tell me what's going on. Speaking of healthy, Coach Doug Peterson has declared Ryan Matthews healthy, and he will remain the Eagles' starting running back. Hmm, I believe I've got a water bet on that. I'm just going to take a sip. <clears throat> I'm, I'm fine. Yeah, you have a water. <laughs> now that you have come out on the show just now and uh, tooted your horn about the water bet, I feel no guilt about, <laughs> about springing forcing, it on you. Uh, forcing the Forcing, water. yeah, I mean, you said... 15 carries. Yeah, well, that's he, not saying Here's the water. deal for me, which is what, I've, be by your what I've believed. If Ryan Matthews is healthy, he will be the primary ball carrier. Is he going to be on the field for 65% of snaps? No, that's just not going to happen. Uh, they, they're going to use uh, Sproles and Barner, these guys in passing situations. Smallwood will get a couple carries here and there. But Ryan Matthews should end up with around 15 carries. Okay. All right. Do we have anything else in the news? Cam Newton not practicing, but that it's Wednesday. Uh, he's still in the concussion situation, but his game is on Monday, so they don't really have to report anything today. Okay. And yeah. and there was breaking news for Chargers cornerback Jason Verrett believes he might have suffered a torn ligament in his knee. They take on the Raiders. This is a huge upgrade, likely for Amari Cooper. Uh, the, man, the Chargers. What is going on with the Chargers? Dude, they've got to do something about the they, water last over there. year too. Yeah, this is two years running where nobody can stay healthy. Brandon Flowers missed. Jason Verrett <clears throat> missed. The Danny Woodhead's gone down. It's not. Hey, the vibes aren't good. Jason, I I really need your assistance here. We have limited drops that I can use with the laptop situation. <clears throat> can you do a trumpet like toot the horn type of sound for us? <laughs> You're looking at three of the top 20 most accurate experts for week number four. Oh, Seriously? Three. Who, wait. We were we were all in the top yeah! the top 20. <laughs> uh, on this side of the desk, very proud to say, number six. Very number nice. Number six? Number six. You know, we're an entertaining show, if I, if I may say this. And so sometimes... <laughs> Sometimes people think like, oh, you know, oh, they're just they're just entertaining. I don't know about their analysis. We do a lot of research and, and work into the analysis. We, we, we uh, want to be accurate. Jason does way too much. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I can be without the laptop. No, but so, uh, this was I, our, did Jason beat me? He beat you by two spots. Yes. Am I 20? You are 19. Oh, I'll take it. Jason is 17. I finished six this week. Um, hey, congratulations, which, fellas. For goodness sakes. Uh, is great. Yeah, look, Jason's right, though. I've seen that before because people are – they like the fun that we have. They like the fact we talk about more than just, like, these stats on the show. We give you context for things and talk about, like, being a commissioner or enjoying your league. Yeah, I was going to say joy of fantasy football. Right. It's not all just spreadsheet reading, but um, very, you know, obviously proud to perform well on our rankings for Love you guys. It. So, um, Moving let, along. Let's get into uh, Keep Trade Cut. Keep trade cut. Yeah. Shout out to Steve Smith for those rankings. <laughs> you came through, old man. Yeah, Steve Smith, man. What a <laughs> what a great week. All right, Golden Tate, keep trade cut. Uh, cut. Uh, Wide receivers are uh, I'm willing, once you fall into a certain tier, you're a dime a dozen. I'm willing. Right. I mean, willing Eddie Royal or Golden on. Tate? I'll take the what. The unknown of Eddie Royal. I completely agree. Yeah, I, I think he's moved into the cut category. Go but but if, if Golden Tate's sitting on your waivers and you need a guy to start and you start him, sure. you might get a great week. He, I mean, he's not a he's not a must cut. Yeah. But he's uh if 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 you need to cut a guy and you've got a laundry list of guys you go who to cut, eh, all right, Golden Tate. Yeah. Gio Bernard. Keep. I, I would keep him. He's been he's he, he's amazingly still a running back too. I think that was built on week two. Yes. Uh, but 
he's still a talented running back, and they've had some hard uh, – the, the Bengals have had a very difficult schedule so far. Uh, I, you know, they, he had the game against the Broncos. That, that hurt him. I would definitely hold on to Geo. Okay. Let's talk about Frank Gore. Keep Trey what? Cut. What? You keep – the old man's strength is getting it done again. Well, I, I think one argument and the reason he's brought up in this context is... Oh, to tr do you trade him? Yeah. Do you kind of say, all right, he's getting into the end zone more than I think he will? Do you move him? I you, guess no for Mike. It, it would be a no for me as well. You drafted Frank Gore to be exactly what he is. And if you put your roster together well, where you've got kind of your boom guys and your safe medium guys, he's filling a, an important role. If you can get value for him as an RB1, which I believe he is right now, then I would trade him because I don't expect him to. But the, the reality is Frank Gore never has the respect because of his age um, that that will garner a good trade value. So I'm almost definitely keeping him. OK, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, Matt Jones, uh, didn't you say, Mike, that yes. last week on Pro Football Focus? No, he was, it's through the year. Yeah. Wait, what? Yes. yes. Through the year. <laughs> Matt Jones has uh, been very efficient. I, I don't know what the great. I don't know what the grading system is doing over here, but Pro Football Focus, a very trusted source. I trust them. I believe in their research. According to them, Matt Jones has been the best, as far as efficiency, been the best running back, where his uh, clearly his offensive line is letting him down. But uh, the way that they're grading him out, they think he has played extremely well. Yeah. Shocking. I, but based on that, based especially on for you, Mike. Yeah. Oh, look. I, I, I believe I've, that we have a video, a, a clip of oh, you yeah. saying Matt Jones stinks. Yeah, we certainly do. I heard Chris Collinsworth on the broadcast, I think on, uh, what is it, Sunday night? Yeah. And, you know, Pro Football Focus is now featured in the broadcast yep. as part of the, the NBC broadcast. And they're much more of an advanced metric type of thing. And I heard him try, trying to get through some stats that – came up for pro football focus and i don't think he had any idea and these are like total nerd fantasy they're stats. a little on the nerd fantasy <laughs> side and i think he was fighting through and like halfway through i think he had no clue <laughs> what the stat was he was just saying it it was entertaining to me because uh yeah fantasy's breaking in man that's great that's great i love it mainstream there is on. nobody that you come across that either isn't a hardcore fantasy player or says they, they normally go like this. They go, yeah, I don't play, but every single person around me plays. <laughs> okay, so with Matt Jones, do you trade for him? I'm No, heck no. Uh, I don't. If you can get him cheap, I might trade for him. Just hey, uh, How do you get him cheap now? I know. His, his value is going to be inflated because he had a pretty good game. Yeah. But well, I'm, well, all I'm saying is the, the person who – the owner who has Matt Jones sees the inflated game. Oh, I'm going to try and get value for him. They might just be trying to move him, period, because they want out of Matt Jones. If you can trade Matt Jones for Frank Gore or Matt Jones in a situation where you can get a guy that is more consistent. For me, Matt Jones, the problem is that some games are going to be okay. Yes. And some games true. are going to be like Chris Thompson and then not involved in that team. I, I'm just afraid to start Matt Jones. I'm not excited about it. Yeah, sure. I, I, I can completely agree with that. So. So, hey, before we get into the rest of the Keep Trade Cut, I want to thank today's sponsor, 5-4 Club. They are hooking you up with all of the cleanest styles with a monthly clothing subscription. You're getting crazy value. I'm talking crazy. Such good stuff. Super value for just 60 bucks. Look, I don't like clothes shopping. 5-4 handles it for me. The three of us are all members of the 5-4 Club. If you want to stand out from the crowd, you want to stand out like Max from the Goofy movie, that's how much you want to stand out. You become a 5-4 member. Earlier in the show, Jason said uh, someone had you know moved up the rankings in quick fashion. Quick fashion is what we're talking yeah. about. <laughs> Look, yeah. it's Sunday. This is your free day. You, you want to go shopping all day? Or do you want to watch football and let someone else take care of it? 5-4 is doing this. They let you pick from four different style profiles, so you get the kind of clothes you want. They got free shipping. Build that wardrobe up. No more, oh, crap, what am I going to wear tonight? At this particular event, I have nothing. That's bogus. If you're a 5-4 club member, they're taking care of you. Shorts and button-ups when you need them. Jackets and jeans when it gets cold. Are you curious to see how easy the 5-4 club is? You go to 5-4club.com, use our code BALLERS. BALLERS. And sign up, get 50% off of the first month of 5-4 club packages. That's promo code BALLERS for 50% off the first month of the 5-4 club. This this uh, offer will end at the end of October. It will expire at the end of October, so get in on it today. 
All right. We also want to thank today's sponsor, ZipRecruiter. If you are a business owner, you've heard that name before because ZipRecruiter, they have been used by over 1 million businesses. And if you're hiring, you need to be able to post your jobs to find the best candidates in as many places as you as possible in the easiest possible way. You don't have time to go and individually post everywhere and find all the best candidates in that fashion. You just go to ZipRecruiter to get the perfect hire and post your job to all the top job sites. And now you can with complete ease. This is a great product. We've had people tweet us about this. Find jobs on ZipRecruiter and found candidates on ZipRecruiter. Uh, and you can go to ZipRecruiter.com slash, slash sportsfan. ZipRecruiter.com slash sports fan to try it out uh, with an offer from this show. You can post to all those different websites and you can find people in any industry, any city nationwide, no more juggling emails, no more calls to the office, and you can screen them right there on ZipRecruiter. So find out why they've been used by 1 million businesses today and you can post for free by going to ZipRecruiter.com slash sports fan. All right, let's talk about TJ Yeldon briefly. Real trade quick, him. keep trade cut. Trade him. Yeah. I would trade him. I don't believe in the Jags running D or their running game. I don't believe in Gus Bradley and, and the, you know, their passing game. I'm fine with because they'll be down their running game. I don't want you can trade Yeldon right now. Deshaun Jackson. I would trade. Uh, keep, 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 keep. I would. I'm saying trade as in I would trade for him. Yeah. This week I would, he has. I'd, I'd try to acquire DJ. this week. He's got a juicy matchup. He's going to juicy. go. ham. I'd rather start Mike Wallace than Deshaun Jackson. Hey, you want to make a third water bet of the week? Oh, no. my goodness. Dang it, because that no. was an easy one. No, is, Deshaun Jackson's the kind of guy that ruins water bets every third week. Sure. It's just the other two I'd win, but now, I don't know which week it does is. Does the Mike Wallace start have anything to do with the, the blurb of Joe Flacco is upset that they're not throwing more deep balls? No, it just has to do with the fact they throw the ball 50 times a game. That's fair. And he at least, I think, will have. You know, Deshaun Jackson will have awesome games. I don't really have any major problem with him. I he. From me as an owner, I just don't like starting him. That's it. That's all it is. I yeah. don't like starting those guys. So uh, I was just real – yeah. I mean, he's he has been boom bust. In our le Here's our league of record scoring. 13.2, five and a half. 20.1, one. So that means big game, right? Yep. Big you, game. You, you, all right. You know keep, what's coming. Keep trade cut. Science. Keep trade – yeah, science. <laughs> Pro football focus reports. <laughs> uh, Amari Cooper. Uh, I have thoughts on Amari if you want me to give you mine. Here's my thought on Amari. I'm going to hold him. Uh, the The report, if if Verrett is out, I mean, that's great news for Amari Cooper. I think the big games for him will happen. Michael Crabtree is the alpha in, in Oakland. It's time for us to just accept this. He was last year. He is this year. We just have to accept that Michael Crabtree is the number one. Here, here's my opinion on the matter, and I think this is going to help fantasy owners. So if you if you want to heed my advice today, uh, feel free because I think it really will help you. I am both keeping and trading for Amari Cooper. This is like Schrodinger's cat. And let me tell you why. I have talked to Amari Cooper owners. <laughs> I, I've, I've pulled no, them no, all. No. I've pulled I thought you were going to say I've talked to Amari Cooper. No. There's, a, there's something that happens when a guy has super high upside in the beginning of the season as a draft, as a drafted guy, and then is outshined by an existing teammate for a number of weeks. And what that is is a disenfranchised feeling for those owners. It is four to nothing on touchdowns right now with Cooper dropping a couple. The feeling – now, but yardage and catches, they're very similar. The touchdowns are different. Amari Cooper's young, big plays, 137 yards week one. I think I trade for him right now because I have talked to people and they are letting him go cheap. I almost had – look, right now I would trade uh, – you know, I had somebody thinking about Will Fuller in a deal to get Amari Cooper because Will Fuller's shiny and Amari Cooper's kind of letting you down. But Derek Carr is a third ranked fantasy quarterback right now. They're not giving running backs more than seven, eight carries each on that team. I really just, I personally, I'm trading for Amari Cooper. Amari, I tried really hard to do it. Amari Cooper is also one of the league leaders right now through the year uh, in uh, targets in the air, like where, where the ball travels in the air. So, you know, they're targeting him <laughs> downfield. Why you, is that? No, it, it, it's just funny because, uh, I just they're tar picturing it targets in the air. Yeah, I, as as opposed to you mean you know, target depth. Someone can or, yes, exactly. Okay. Like where where the ball travels in the air, 
of those guys. Because, you know, there's people that have an 80-yard touchdown, but they got a five-yard pass. They weren't targeting them down the field. When you talk about those those league leaders of who's really being downfield targeted, Amari Cooper is still among them. He hasn't reeled those in, but they're coming. I, I could not agree more with you that you keep him or you trade for him, but don't pay up with the name. Find that owner that's disenfranchised. You, sir, have convinced me to make a few trade offers <laughs> right now. Oh, now, no. Now, I, no, I, I, I will say this, though. Maybe I will. <laughs> the expectations cannot be that you're trading for a wide receiver one. No. Because but, I don't believe that he is a wide receiver one the rest of the year. I didn't have him that way preseason. I've seen nothing. But he's a solid wide receiver that's better than what he's playing right wait, now. And he'll have one weeks. He will absolutely have one weeks. I mean, he last year you're talking about – you're talking about accepting him as an alpha. I, I think it's A and B. It's like, you know, you have it one, one A, one B. B because even last year when Crabtree outperformed, it was like a couple spots, right? It was like 21 and 23 on the finish year ranking. It's fair. So I think it's not one of those things where I don't think Carr thinks Crabtree's his alpha. I think Carr thinks he has two awesome wide receivers, like Fitz and Bolden in, there, in, the, in those Maybe. years. Maybe because you don't see Cooper targeted – uh, in the red zone. In the red zone, yeah, in the end zone, because he doesn't believe in his hands. All right, before we get into the Thursday night preview in the mailbag, I want to do – I'm going to put a bunch of names out there, but I want them quick, all right? All right. Keep, Rapid round. Keep trade all cut. Right. No long discussions. We're going to get through names. Jordan Matthews. Keep. Trade for keep him. Keep trade for. All right. DeAndre Hopkins. Uh, keep. Yeah, keep. If I can trade him, I would, though. Okay. Like, as, if I can get fair value for Hopkins, I would move on. Steve Smith Sr. Keep. Keep or trade for. Yeah, I agree with that. Brandon Cooks and uh, Willie Sneed. I would try to trade. If I can get value for Cooks, I'd trade him. I would as well. Willie Sneed. Hold. I'll keep him, yeah. I I'm going to put him as a trade for me. Okay. Eric Decker. Uh, there's nothing. You you have to keep him. You're yeah, not gonna you're, get stuck. you're stuck. You're uh, stuck. What about the Cardinals wideouts? Let's just go <clears> through <throat> all three of them real quick. Fitz? I would keep. I would trade for him. Floyd? Uh. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't you're know not going to cut him. Did you cut him? No. no, not yet. I would hold on to him for now. But you're not John gonna Brown? Him. Trade for. Yeah, pick him up. Kenny Stills? Cut, cut. if you need to. Carson Wentz? <laughs> I made – this is keeper – this is Dynasty League, but I actually made a trade offer uh, last night for Carson Wentz. Somebody pays 17 in our um, in our three-keeper league. $17 yeah. for Carson Wentz today. That's a, wow. that's a lot of quiche. That's unnecessary. Not as much as I spent on Cameron Bright. Yeah, I saw that. That's a lot I saw of money. That you also outbid me on the bills, and I was not too happy about that. I'm pretty happy because I'm playing you. But I'm like I said, I'm not very happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, uh, last one, Rob Gronkowski. Gosh, we talked about him you earlier. you got to keep him. I would trade for him. Yeah, I would too. All right, Thursday night preview. You've got the one and three Arizona Cardinals and the one and three San Francisco 49ers. We're sorry, America. What do you think the view is of uh, Jeff Fisher's mustache from the bottom? <laughs> <laughs> oh. When you're looking up at Jeff Fisher, that it, can't be a pretty picture. Uh, it, there's a lot of breadcrumbs. Oh, oh, man. It's a rough go here in Arizona. I'm wearing a Cardinal gear today in an effort to – Get encourage my own head yeah right? i mean this game this game to me goes completely dependent upon who the quarterback for the arizona cardinals is i uh, we have a water bet on this i do not believe carson palmer will be ready i sure hope he is but it changes literally everything in this game for me i i i don't want to play larry fitzgerald or john brown two guys that i love in this game if carson palmer is playing if drew stanton is playing i think you could maybe get by with a flex for larry fitzgerald uh and, and I'm not going to start anybody else. And really, I know in my own league where I have Larry, I have him benched right now in the expectation that Drew Stanton is going to be the quarterback. If that's the case, I think this is an extremely low-scoring game, even with Navarro Bowman gone for – Well, I wanted to bring that up because Navarro Bowman being out is huge news, especially for like a David Johnson owner because yeah. Bowman's one of the best in the business. Very, I feel really bad for Navarro Bowman, the player. because He's so good. He's so good. And what, Achilles, right? Was that what it? Yeah, it was Achilles or ACL. I can't. I'm pretty sure it was an Achilles injury, I'll check and it, real quick. it's a devastating injury for. I mean, he's the best player on that entire team on either side of the ball. So, Achille, I'm, yeah, you are correct. It was you know, Dave, David Johnson is a great play this week, uh, re regardless. Who, of who is David Johnson? David Johnson. Thank you. My apologies. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But you regardless, if Carson's playing, if Drew Stanton's playing, I love David Johnson in this game. But he's an automatic weekly start. 
What about 49ers are the 32nd ranked run D, by the way, to throw in with that. Uh, On the other side of the ball, the Cardinals are 20th against the run and 7th against the pass. The passing game in San Francisco is as bad as a passing game can be right now. You have, uh, I think Torrey Smith even came out and said that this week, said this is as bad as it can possibly get. You know, he says, I'm still young. I'm still open is what Uh. he says. And he just cannot get, you know, I think he missed, I think Gabbert missed him on a bomb that was just wide open last week. Torrey Smith, you have my condolences, my Sympathies. Uh, Basically for me, David Johnson, Carlos Hyde, uh, because I assume Palmer is out. So those are the only two guys that I want to start. Otherwise, if Palmer's uh, in, it changes. Abandon all hope. Yeah. You who enter. Um, What is the Vegas line on this game? Or do they not even have it with the Palmer situation? They actually have a line, and I'm shocked that they have a line considering that they don't know the quarterback situation, but it's 42 and a half. An Arizona game at 42 points. And Arizona is favored in San Francisco by four right now? Three is what I have, but yeah, have I think it, I, okay. I think mine is old. All right, well, let's move on to the mailbag. 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 Yeah. Whew. All right, let's jump into the mailbag. If you have a question for the show, it's why we exist to answer your questions to help you with your team. So go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Click on the submit a question button in the upper right hand corner. Send us your question, and we would be happy to help you out. Uh, we also have an exclusive. Bonus, bonus bonus mailbag show on Thursday. So tomorrow for all of our join the foot.com members, um, we're going to have our rankings out by tonight and tomorrow in terms of the week five rankings, including some, uh, some bonus bonus. bonus. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little too overwhelming for me. Um, flex rankings for the join the foot.com uh, supporters as well. So we appreciate your support over there. All right. Here's a question from Ruben in Bakersfield. He said, somebody in my league. Sounds like you would like Bakersfield, Jason. Oh, it sounds delicious. Somebody in my league wants to trade me TJ Hel- TJ Hilton. I'm pretty confident he's meeting <laughs> T.Y. Hilton. <laughs> T.Y. Hilton and Mike Evans for A.J. Green. Should I accept that offer? Ooh, you get, I would accept yes. it in a heartbeat. You get Hilton and Evans? Yeah. Look, I, I know I talked about on the show last week. I said A.J. Green is pushing closer to that top tier. Mike Evans is also pushing closer to that top tier. As well. T.Y. Hilton is, is yeah, yeah. Well, T.Y. Hilton, I already had you know on the pretty high there as well. Look, Mike Evans is Beast. the is the Clooney Wahlberg <laughs> of wide receivers. You're on a team that has to pass the ball because you're either losing or you can't run it right now. I mean, it, and he's a monster. And he is, Vincent Jackson, the only other mainstay well, large target, is more, you, no. That's the point. Oh, is he yeah. looks just. No, there's John. another one. It's you, know, you know who the number two wide receiver is? It's Cameron Bray. Well, sure. The number oh, yeah. two pass catcher is Bray. Yeah, and Humphreys. Pronounced with an Humphreys. All right. <laughs> Larry in Clinton Township. I was offered DeAndre Hopkins and Latavius Murray for Amari Cooper and Todd Gurley. Mm, okay, let's do break this do down. This. Um, this is a huge no for me. Yeah, I think I would rather have Cooper and Todd Gurley. at the, It's non-PPR, so Gurley is still in play here. Not that he's not in, in oh, PPR. Oh, he, he's but. much better than Murray rest of the season. Yeah. To me. I'll, I'll take – And I'll, then I, I, we just talked about – I'll go Cooper, Gurley. Are you on the fence with this, Jay? What do you think? Uh, I'm on the fence just because I think it's fair and equal value. Yeah, I do you, think it's fair. Yeah. you. I, I, I'm not off of DeAndre Hopkins by any means. No. I would much rather have Hopkins than Cooper. So you're saying, you know, which one is more important, the wide receiver or the running back? Usually the running back is – is going to be more important for winning a championship, getting you all the way through. However um, – I don't make this trade, and the reason is because I just don't like sideways trades. I don't like – I mean, it's just you're trading a running back and a wide receiver for another running back and wide receiver. They're all the same tier. Like, you know. only reason I do those sometimes is to navigate uh, matchups or bye weeks or some playoff circumstance. Sure. But, yeah, I'm with you. It, it kind of puts you in a position like me to just regret your trade if it doesn't work out in your favor. <laughs> and it was a completely – just because it's fair. So, I, I also looked up, uh, looked up a little bit of the girly numbers – Compared to a guy like C.J. Anderson, if you look at C.J. Anderson over the last nine games compared to Gurley's last nine games, so the last six of last year and then first. Well, if you're using last year, then Gurley was was fantastic, right? Well, no, oh, no, he was kind of short. I'm making, there, the, yeah. I'm making the point that uh, last six games of last year, C.J. Anderson was better by about half a point. Thus far this year, he's better by about five points. That so was, That was non-bell cow C.J. Anderson as well. Yeah, so I, I guess I'm just saying, like, if you – it's easy to hear the name Gurley and resist trading him, but if you could go out and get C.J. Anderson in a trade and something, which you could, 
You could probably go use the name of Gurley to get C.J. Anderson and another player. I would do that. I would do that, too. Yeah. Doug Martin. Oh, that's the question. <laughs> that's not. The... Hey, Doug, how's it going? What's Some... your question, Doug? Sometimes these get in here. He's like, I've got a lot of time on my hands. Um, this is from Zach about oh, Doug Martin. Hey, fun. guys, this is my first year listening. Love your show. Thanks, Doug and Zach. Uh, my question's about Doug Martin. He was dropped in my league. Do I go pick him up? Yes. And drop your boy Kenneth Dixon? Yes. 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 And you bid whatever you need to to get him. Yeah. Get him. He has two. If you play the the playoffs like most leagues where it's weeks 14, 15, 16, he has two matchups in 14 and 16 against the New Orleans Saints. He's going to be healthy. And honestly, I think what the Bucks have seen in this little stint without him is that Charles Sims is not able to do what they want from that running back position that Doug Martin is able to do. And they're not happy with Sims right now. No, they're not happy with anyone on the team though. Ben, to be fair. Yeah. Winston as well. Ben in San Diego says he plays in a 12 man PPR league on ESPN. He noticed there is no deadline for trades. So trades have taken place during the playoffs oh, in the past that's year. Gross. He says he thinks it's unfair and trade deadline should be set at least at the end of the regular season, if not earlier. And you know what, Jason, let me slide the box over to you. <laughs> Hop up on that box. Give a little speech. Sure. Look, th that is disgusting. You have to have a trade <laughs> deadline in your leagues because when, there is nothing that stops in a casual league. There is absolutely nothing. Like, if I'm that out, ruins it. If I'm not even in the playoffs and I can trade with someone in the playoffs and this isn't even a, a, a dynasty or a keeper league, wh why, why should I be allowed at all? So for Even me, if it's a keeper league. I, I mean, it's just – it's terrible. You need to – correct that or fix that i hope hopefully if you're playing over in the you know the foot clan leagues uh over with the join the foot community if anybody does not have uh, a trade deadline in that i'm gonna go ahead and say i overrule you i am the <laughs> supreme commissioner and you need <laughs> to change, you need to change the supreme it lord commander <laughs> you need to change it immediately um a note on this though if you are in a keeper league i move the trade deadline up early that helps earlier. From, yeah. Earlier, it helps from tanking and things like that. If you if you aren't, I, I don't mind if it's back a little further towards the playoffs. It is. It's a challenge because when you move it up, I mean, you once that trade deadline hits, it's kind of a you're kind of sad you can't do it anymore. But you need the integrity of the league to be strong. You cannot have those late trades completely ruining everything. I still so, love the idea in a keeper league of having two trade deadlines: one for picks and one for players. Yeah. It, have an early trade deadline on picks so that people aren't fire fire sailing. Uh, did I say that right? Fire. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Amazing. Um, for the the next season, close to the playoffs. All right. John in Fort Worth says, "Should I drop Dwayne Washington for Wendell Smallwood?" Now, Dwayne Washington's a guy who we need an injury report on today. Yeah. We don't have an update for you, and a lot of people want to know because they went out and they got him on waiver wire, and they said, "Hey, here's the guy that might be the the bell cow in Detroit." I Personally, I would keep Washington. I would prefer I would go Smallwood, Smallwood because to me what we have, I know we have not seen a, a huge sample size, but I don't believe that Dwayne Washington is ever going to get it done. I don't believe that who, I mean, it's not an easy task to be that kind of uh, first and second down running back for the Detroit Lions. I, I mean, the upside just isn't there. I think the upside for when my point is I'm not starting either one of these guys right now. But later on in the season, I could see starting Wendell Smallwood if there was an injury ahead. I think sure. Wendell Smallwood but would actually thing. perform. You have to have an injury ahead of him, which with Ryan Matthews certainly could happen. We've seen it before. Dwayne Washington's path is a much shorter well, path, assuming that he doesn't have he a long-term foot problem. Yeah, I mean, he already had the injuries in front of him, and I have found out that I don't want to play him. That's How? kind of my point. He didn't, we didn't get to see anything. I, I guess when you go, you know, several weeks where you've got the opportunity and granted now he's hurt, uh, I'm maybe I'm wrong. I will say perhaps Dwayne Washington could show me something in the future, but it's been a long time since any Lions running back has shown me something. Better pedigree for Smallwood. What as far as draft? Yeah. 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 Well, and that's all right. I, I mean, also, when he did have the one opportunity, 17 for 79 and a touchdown or whatever. Sure. Matthew in Plymouth. Who ends the season better, Marvin Jones or Jordy Nelson? Jordy. Jordy. Yeah, I think it's Jordy as well. The J is silent. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know what? I was thinking earlier when you talked about air targets. <laughs> um, I was thinking we almost need some sort of like document or uh, uh, like a translation book where a you key? can. Yeah, a key. You know, like a 
uh, running, Gloss- running, running, th- running through the ground means blank. Like I said, target depth. And you go, yeah, that's what I meant. I'm like, we, so target depth equals air targets. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. That'd be great. Someone make that. That would be helpful. Andy in Toronto. Hey, guys, love the show. <laughs> to the point of three exclamation points. Oh, oh I appreciate sure. that. Yeah. I have both Kenneth Dixon and Ryan Matthews. Both Terrence West and Wendell Smallwood are available on the waiver wire. Who should I prioritize? West. I agree. I definitely agree. West. Go West, young man. Ew, very nice. Chris in Grand Rapids, Michigan. An owner offered two trades that were both accepted with Odell Beckham as part of both trades. <laughs> is th- <laughs> How is that even possible? Is that owner then allowed to pick which trade he likes to actually process? No, the first the well, first it, accepted one is the trade. Well, there, there's clearly not. I don't think he means in the system. I, I believe he sent two trades out to people maybe – you know, in a messenger or something, and well, both, both said yes. If time. it's in a messenger, these things are time stamped. Yeah, the, time. The first, I was going to go with you're allowed to trade them to both teams. No, not really. <laughs> time is the <laughs> time is the answer here. It, you know, if if you put this and it out, heals all things. Look, if you put this out <laughs> in a messenger app, <laughs> that's that's I, a Mike joke. What are you? Doing? If, if I made, you're, you're welcome. If I made Mike and Andy two different trades, and I sent them out on Facebook, and I said, "Hey, would you take?" such and such for Odell. Would you take such and such for Odell? And then I come back in a little while and they both said yes. And maybe Andy's is ahead of yours, right? He got in and said yes before you did, but I haven't seen it. I didn't process it through the system. You're picking your favorite. I'm p- you darn right. I am. And it's fair. It is fair because it's not in the system. Exactly. Yeah. So you're in a negotiating setting. You know, it's kind of like a letter <laughs> of intent versus sure. an actual. Uh, yeah, I mean, you're stuck. You have to kind of do that. I mean, yeah. you're, you're now when I say time matters, if it's if we're talking like one day he said this and now I'm considering it, and then the next day you can't do that. That's like okay, we you're agreed just, on this. You're on such an honor system here. Yeah, yeah. well, you're, you're you on. I trust no one. You're on the honor system because you didn't send it through the system. If the other person wanted to guarantee it, they send it through the system. You click accept and you're done. There you go. So you just kind of uh, you know you accept the risks. But, what well uh, what if what if <laughs> what if the person responded by sending it through the system? Well, that's did he click accept? They, the the other person has to click accept for it to no. be a deal. All someone's right. someone's gonna get their. Feelings we do hurt. want to remind you and thank you, uh, or I'll thank Five Four Club for sponsoring the show. Uh, Five Four Club is awesome. When I walk down the stairs, my wife says, "You don't look bad. You look good." Thanks, which Michael. is really the accomplishment that it's an amazing I could not I could not get to on my own. So. Definitely go to 54club.com, use the promo code BALLERS, sign up, get 50% off the first month of 54 Club packages, and that expires at the end of the month, so definitely check that out. We appreciate you guys listening to the show, subscribing on iTunes, supporting us on Join the Foot. Yeah. Uh, we, we're excited every day we get to come in here and do this and prepare uh, for another week of, of NFL football and fantasy football and helping you enjoy your league. So we're always listening to you. We're always on Twitter at the FF at the FF Ballers. Uh, love your feedback. Appreciate everything you guys do to, to the, listen and make the show The great. rankings will be up later today, so that means jointhefoot.com, people. Your premium rankings will be up later today as well. Let's, All right, uh, we'll get uh, those hashtag Foot Clan titles this year. Starts of the week tomorrow, too. And when hey, you get your uh, title. Fan- fantasyjocks.com, promo code FOOTBALLERS. Get your trophy on. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. (laughs) Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.